I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons, my Biblio Spran, Biblio Howlers, and Biblio Mansers. Thank you so much for supporting my hobby and passion even more. It means so much to me. Hi everyone, Patek here. Uh, so today's video will be a continuation of the underhive video that I posted at the end of last month. So at the end of last month, I posted a 15. Uh, 15 most underhyped or underrated, but I prefer to call it underhyped. 15 underhyped fantasy series video according to 300 fantasy readers. So in that video, I posted uh, series that were mentioned four times, five times, and six times based on the data I gained from 300 fantasy readers. But when I made that video, I always wondered whether it was the right decision or not to actually post the one that were mentioned the most or actually, maybe it would be better if I post uh, the one that were mentioned less. I mean, in a way, it means that those series are even more under hype. That should be correct, right? I mean, some of you even mentioned that uh, as well. But I have to mention this first. So in total, there were about 250 series mentioned. So out of those 250 fantasy series, 15 of them I already did in my previous under hype fantasy series video. Those were for the one that were mentioned four times, five times, and six times. For the one that were mentioned three times, there are 10 series, and that's the one that I'm going to be talking about uh, today. How about series that were mentioned two times and one time? So here's the thing. As you can probably guess, there are about 200 fantasy series that were mentioned only once or twice for under high fantasy series. So it is well, it is looking quite impossible for me to contain them into one video. So for now, for this video only, I will be talking about 10 underhyped fantasy series according to 300 fantasy readers. And what does it mean by underhyped? It means that most fantasy readers that gave it a try usually end up loving it. But somehow, not a lot of people just talk about it. And I want to make it clear once more that these are not my list. This is 10 under high fantasy series that were mentioned three times in the polling that I posted. And out of this list, I've read five of them and I haven't read the other five. And uh, I'm just gonna say it up front that I don't agree with some of this. But again, this isn't my list. So yeah, let's get started. So the first one is the Earthsea Cycle by Ursula Gwyn. And I think this one kind of makes sense. I think uh, the Earthsea Cycle has been held so often as classic in fantasy, but somehow these days, especially, not a lot of people talk about the Earthsea Cycle, at least not the one that I've seen. And I think uh, these readers also agree that not too many people talk about Earthsea Cycle now. But every time the topic of Earthsea Cycle comes up, readers who have gave it a try usually ends up loving it very much and uh, this is a sin uh, of mine i haven't read the earthy cycle i've only watched uh, the ghibli, uh, ghibli anime adaptation of the earthy and it was horrible <laughs> it was horrible that it actually stopped me from reading the books for well until now i still haven't read the books but i've heard from uh, many readers that uh, the anime adaptation, even though it, this is done by Studio Ghibli, which is one of my favorite anime studio, but everyone practically agree, uh, the fans of the series, I think even Ursula Gwyn herself, uh, agree that the movie, the anime movie adaptation, is a far cry from the books in terms of quality and vision and storytelling. And yes, Earthsea Cycle is still on my TBR pile. I hope to get to it uh, someday. And the second series on this list is Raven Shadow by Anthony Ryan. The first book is Blood Song. The second book is Tower Lord, and the third book is The Queen of Fire. So I think I have talked about this series uh, quite a lot of times on my channel. I have mentioned so often that Blood Song is one of my favorite books of all time, and I have also mentioned so frequently that uh, Tower Lord and also The Queen of Fire didn't live up to the quality of Blood Song. Especially Queen of Fire, in my opinion, is one of the most disappointing conclusions to a trilogy uh, that I've read, even though uh, now this series is no longer a trilogy because uh, there is the Raven's Blade duology. But yeah, I think the reason that this is still underhyped to this day, I personally don't think Blood Song is underrated or underhyped. I think many agree that Blood Song is amazing, myself included. But I think the reason, the main reason why uh, the Raven Shadow is not too often recommended now, well, it is for the reasons I just mentioned. Because not only many agree that Blood Song is amazing, but many unfortunately also agree that the second and the third book is a disappointment compared to Blood Song. And yeah, as I said, I have to agree with this one. But I will not stop anyone from giving Raven Shadow a try. This series is mentioned three times uh, according to 300 fantasy readers as one of the most under high fantasy series. And I think 
you should still take a look well at the very least read blood song because it is absolutely amazing one of my favorite debut of all time and the third series on this list is the books of babel by josiah bancroft so this one is a bit tricky for me i think uh, there was a time where practically everyone on twitter on facebook and also uh, on Reddit and also on Booktube, many of them were talking about the books of Babel by Josiah Bancroft, especially Sandlin in a sense uh, of the Sphinx and the third book, The Hot King. But after the fall of Babel was released, I have the unfortunate and also the unpopular opinion of, well, calling the fall of Babel just like the Queen of Fire, one of the most disappointing conclusion to a series that I love. I love the books of Babel. I love Sandlin in a sense. I like Arm of the Sphinx and I totally love The Hot King, but The Fall of Babel, in my opinion, is just a disappointment. And I don't know whether many actually agree with me or not, I don't think so, but yeah, lately I don't see many people talking about the books of Babel again. I don't know what's the main reason behind this and I really hope this is not because of my review on Goodreads. I don't think I am that influential, <laughs> I really don't think that way, but yeah. Uh, if you're interested in giving this series a try, just give it a try. Josiah Bancroft has a beautiful writing and also the world building in the series is just amazing and unique. It is quite unique. I don't think I've read many series or any series that's really similar to the books of Babel. Then the fourth series on this list is The Chronicles of Amber by Roger Zelani. I haven't read anything by uh, Roger Zelani yet, but I've heard uh, everything by uh, this author, especially the Chronicles of Amber, is very, very influential to the current state of the fantasy genre. I've heard that many popular and classic fantasy books uh, right now, many of them are actually influenced by Chronicles of Amber by Roger Zalani. And well, I haven't read this one, but I can definitely agree that I don't hear uh, many people talking about this series now. And I think it is quite odd considering that so many readers and also writers consider Chronicles of the Amber to be very influential but it doesn't get talked about as frequent as let's say the lord of the rings or the wheel of time or a song of ice and fire and i have no idea why and i'll say this number five on this list and <laughs> this one well i completely disagree with this one so this is uh rem remember this is not my list okay uh this is malazan book of the fallen by stephen erickson i I just don't know in which a fantasy community where Malazan Book of the Fallen is considered to be under hype or underrated. I just, I just never see it now. It is insane. Malazan Book of the Fallen by Steven Erickson is one of my top favorite series of all time and it is practically held as the greatest fantasy series by so many fantasy readers. I just can't understand why readers uh, going beyond this list still consider Malazan Book of the Fallen to be under hype or underrated. I really don't think so, but yeah, it is amazing. Maybe, maybe, well, if I take a look at it, if I analyze it, maybe we can actually consider Gardens of the Moon, the first book, to be underrated. But again, I think the relatively lower rating for Gardens of the Moon is understandable because it is not the easiest first book of a series uh, to read. And if you're okay and you can actually understand Gardens of the Moon uh, the first time you read through it, you can love it, that's good. But I also know many fantasy readers who dislike Goddess of the Moon on their first time uh, reading through it. And I think that's the only way I can see Malazan Book of the Fallen to be under hype or underrated because, yeah, I just don't see it. This is one of the greatest fantasy series of all time, not just according to me, but according to many epic fantasy readers. And then the next series on this list is another series that I've read and it is The Winnowing Frame Trilogy by Jen Williams. I absolutely agree with this one. I have read the Widowing Frame trilogy uh, a few years ago and I'm really glad. I'm really glad that this series is gaining a lot of new readers now. And from what I've seen, those who have read the Winnowing Frame trilogy agree that it is an amazing series. Relatively, the Winnowing Frame trilogy is still very much under hype and also quite underrated, especially the first book, The Night Rain. I think it deserves so much more recognition. And if you're watching this, I've talked about the Winnowing Frame trilogy on this channel, on Goodreads and also on Twitter quite a lot. And yes, please do give this series a try. It is easily one of the best uh, fantasy trilogy that I've read and I really hope that Jen Williams and also the Winnowing Frame trilogy will always gain more reader. And speaking of one of my favorite trilogy, the next series on this list is again, well, this one, this time, 
it is my favorite completed fantasy trilogy of all time. And the next series on this list is the Greenbone Saga by Fondali. I think the Greenbone Saga, since the conclusion, a Jade Legacy, uh, came out, I think the series has been gaining so much more hype and so much more recognition now. And I'm really glad. I think this series is, well, absolutely masterful and I love Jade Legacy so much. One of the best books of all time. Well, every book in the Greenbone Saga is one of the best books of all time for me. But there is one thing to remember. Even if you see a lot of people, a lot of readers talking about the Greenbone Saga, maybe on Booktube or maybe on Twitter, because as far as I know, the Greenbone Saga thrive and succeed because of word of mouth. This is something that Fondali has confirmed herself. Word of mouth from reader practically make the series relatively successful. But we have to remember this. If we compare the Greenbone Saga to series like A Song of Ice and Fire or maybe the Stormlight Archive, it is still far below in popularity. But I think based on my observation, most readers who gave uh, the Greenbone Saga a try, an attempt, they end up living it. And I and I couldn't be happier. I think this series is absolutely amazing. Just amazing. It is a masterwork in every aspect. If you're watching this and you still haven't read the Green Bull Saga, despite um, my constant praises of the trilogy like right now, well, please give it a try. I really love, love this series. The last three series on this list, all of them I haven't read. So I cannot say much regarding their quality other than what I've heard. And the first one is for KJ Parker's book, I think The Folding Knife. Although this is not a series, but yeah, many agree that The Folding Knife is very much underrated. I haven't read anything by KJ uh, Parker yet, but I think uh, when I do give his books, his books a try, I will start from The Folding Knife. And yeah, I have actually uh, got myself a copy of The Folding Knife now. And I don't know when I will get to it yet, but I heard that this one is a standalone. And as I always say, an amazing one-off standalone novel in epic fantasy or fantasy is rare. And yeah, I am looking forward to reading this one. As for its underhyped state, well, I think I can agree because I don't hear many people talking about uh, KJ Parker's books. But again, just like every series I just mentioned on this list, every time the topic came up, every time the topic of KJ Parker books uh, came up well many fans agreed that his books especially uh, the folding knife are amazing and then the next series on this list is the night runner series by lynn flewilling i haven't done uh, quite a lot of research on this one but i have seen the cover art to this series popped up uh, a few times on social media on bookish social media uh, such as bookstagram and also uh, book twitter beyond that unfortunately i cannot say too much on it because again i haven't done any research on the night runner yet so hopefully, whenever I get to this one, I will end up living it. But yeah, I think this one is also, well, quite underhyped. And finally, the last series on this list is actually a web novel. And it is called Warm by Wild Bow. Wild Bow? Or Wild Bow? I don't know. Oh, John McRae. I think John McRae is the name of the author. So I haven't seen uh, anyone talk about Warm except on Goodreads. I've seen a few of my friends give Warm a try and they all end up living it, even though this a web novel is, I think it is as huge, almost as huge as A Song of Ice and Fire. So it is still far below the wandering in in terms of word count. But yeah, I think from what I've seen, well, pretty much everyone who have read Worm loved it. And I think I will try to fit Worm into my TBR pile next year. At least I will try, but I don't know whether I can do it or not. I'm not active on Reddit. I don't have a Reddit account. And other than Goodreads and also on Twitter, sometimes I pretty much never see anyone talking about Worm. And I think definitely not on Booktube. So yeah, I think this one definitely belongs in the underhyped status because yeah, those who have read this series usually end up living it. So yeah, that's it for today's video. Again, these are four series that were mentioned three times in the polling that I posted on my uh, YouTube community tab and also on my Twitter account. So in total, right now, I have talked about 25 uh, under high fantasy series according to 300 fantasy readers. Yeah, with these two videos, I have talked about 25 under high fantasy series. So right now, I still don't know whether I will make a video on the series that were mentioned twice and definitely not on the series that were mentioned once because there are way too many series to be compressed into a video or two video. I mean, there are more than 200 series, precisely 225 series. So yeah, it is just too much. I mean, I have done two videos and I mean, I have done two videos now and I have just talked about 
25 fantasy series so yeah right now i'm thinking if i have the energy and time i will try to make just one more video consisting of the under hype series mentioned twice but yeah that will be the last under hype fantasy series video and this is only if i have the time and energy because if i remember correctly yeah there are more than uh, 40 series I think there are more than 40 series uh, mentioned twice. But yeah, until then, that's it for me today. Do let me know your thoughts on the series that I just mentioned on this list. And do let me know whether you want me to make another video on this or not. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons.